Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I want you guys to join me on this rabbit hole of installing Windows XP in 2024. So let's get started. Now this idea all started last week when I was watching a YouTube channel called Now in the 90s where he showcased games that came out in the 90s, 30 years ago, today. And so it kind of hit a sense of nostalgia where I ended up looking through my old boxes of stuff and found a lot of box games. <laughs> so here we are. So I have like a lot of these box games. This is StarCraft 2, World of Warcraft, uh, The Threat X2. I have even Battlefield 2. And this is like the chest set for World of Warcraft and Warcraft 3, the battle chest. And to be honest, this is still worth a pretty penny. I didn't even know that. But upon discovering, I still have a lot more games that I don't have the boxes for anymore, like Battle Cruiser 3000 AD, uh, Red Alert 2, if anybody remembers this, uh, Virtual Pool. I just have a ton of games that I kind of want to relive and replay again. But you know, if you guys ever try to play old games on modern computers, like on Windows 10, it just doesn't do well, especially like... Medal of Honor or Battlefield 2 or even Virtual Pool or Red Alert, any of these games just don't play well on modern operating systems like Windows 10. Now there are lots of ways around this where you can make it into a window mode or some other stuff, but it just feels better when you're playing these games on an operating system it's meant for. So Windows XP is literally the middle line of every one of these games where either the minimal support is Windows XP or the highest support is Windows XP. So Windows XP should be able to play everything that I actually own as far as retro gaming. Now, with that being said, I actually have a very old laptop, which is a Toshiba 1405 Intel cell around 1.2 gigahertz with a Trident, two megabytes of RAM. And I think it has 256 megs of RAM, but I did upgrade it later down the road. Now, this laptop was actually my wife's college laptop back in the day, and it got her through school, but I still retained it. I actually still have the original driver CD, which is right here, the Toshiba. <laughs> driver CD. So installing Windows XP on this device wasn't hard at all. Now the first thing I did was replace the hard drive because this is the hard drive it had and it's clicking like crazy. Like when I try to boot it up it would take forever because the clicking and the hard drive's going bad. So what I ended up doing was upgrading it from a spindle to a M SATA. So you could buy this adapter which is a 44 pin to M SATA hard drive and after replacing that it worked right off the bat. Now I do have to reinstall Windows on this, which wasn't hard at all. Like I said, everything is supported and since it's so old, it has everything that would just work. Installing was a breeze. I just installed it with the OEM Windows XP CD. Now with this, everything installed and all the drivers installed, it brought back a lot of the feelings of Windows XP. It just felt great to have it again. Now I did manage to play StarCraft on here and played very well. And I still can't believe I'm able to remember the hotkeys and some of the gameplays from StarCraft 1. And I'm playing StarCraft Brood Wars. Now after that, I decided to test a little bit more of an intensive game called The Fringe, but playing it on this 1.2 cell ROM with only two megabytes of video RAM, you could quickly tell that it's not powerful enough to do what you want to, especially if I'm gonna to try to run more stronger games like Crisis or something like that, it's not gonna be able to play it. So I retired that computer once again, and this time I'm actually gonna to try to install it on a physical computer, which is the Zima board. And this is where I started learning a lot. The whole purpose of me trying to run this on the Zima board was so that I could actually use one of my older graphic cards, which is the 750 Ti. And with the 750 Ti, you'll be able to play a lot of games. But I quickly realized how much problems it is to install it on a modern day computer. So first, when I try to boot this up with a standard Windows XP CD, the first problem you're gonna run into is the ACPI or APCI era, where it doesn't support the newer uh, functions and you'll just get a blue screen. Upon researching this, and kudos to the Reddit page for Windows XP because there's still actually a lot of community support for Windows XP. Um, I was able to get by that error super easy by just hitting F7 during the installation and it'll bypass the APCI check. Then I have ended up having a second blue screen and in that case, I wasn't able to detect the SATA. Now Windows XP installation only supports IDE, so if it doesn't detect your hard drive or tries to tr uh, trigger your hard drive, you get that blue screen. And this is where I started researching a lot for this. The main issue is there was no drivers during the installation media. So the way to fix this is to inject the drivers that you have for the SATA driver to the installation media. Now, luckily there's this website called Zone94 where somebody actually has a patch where you take the original XPCD, it'll 
create a patch and add all the drivers that you need to this installation media so you can actually install it into a modern day computer. Now, the latest patch is actually since November 2023. So it's actually very, very recent. So when I say there's community support, there's still people who's trying to install this on modern day computer, which is amazing because trying to source out parts to build this on authentic um, P4 or Core 2 Dual or something like that, I think it's going to cost you a lot more than trying to run this on a older but newer computer that doesn't that out supports windows xp long story short i used this patch and i was able to get through the installation in the beginning of this but as soon as it reboots it won't go into windows xp there's something wrong i tried everything uh shutting off the uh, internal gpu adding this card in doing tons of stuff i was not able to get that screen in and i spent a lot of time on it, more time than i wanted to and i tried it on multiple machines i tried it on this zima board i tried it on the zima blade i tried it on another machine i tried it on a mini pc all of it runs into this little issue. And upon doing a little research, I think it has to do with the internal GPU, which is the Intel HD 500, which most of those have. And I think it's triggering it to not be able to load. I finally ditched the idea of installing it into a Xenon board as much as I wanted to and ended up installing it into one of my favorite laptops, which is the Lenovo IdeaPad Y500. Now I showcased this laptop I think on this channel years and years ago because this, this is one of my favorite laptops that I've upgraded throughout the years. And what's good about it is that it's using an i5 third generation. And according to the Reddit page, third generation of CPUs are the last generation that it still supports Windows XP. So I definitely struck the jackpot on this because I do have this i5 third generation. And compared to what we had back in the day for installing Windows XP, like on a P4 or anything, this thing is a beast. It's got dual NVIDIA 650M mobile cards. So I got dual graphic cards on here. I have 16 gigs of RAM, but Windows XP will only detect four, one terabyte hard drive, and i5 four core third generation, which is so good. What's crazy cool is that I was able to go to Lenovo's website. The earliest support for this computer was Windows 7, but because on the Lenovo website, it'll actually give you the model number of the devices that you're trying to install. Like, the audio was Realtek ACL 637 or something like that. And I was able to Google Realtek and grab the XP drivers for every hardware that I had on this computer, aside from the USB 3 and the webcam, because those were Lenovo specials or something like that. I couldn't get any other drivers for that, but I was able to get Intel CPU drivers I was able to get. I was able to get um, sound card drivers, graphic card drivers, uh, Wi-Fi drivers, Ethernet, anything. Basically any driver that I needed for this computer, I was able to get from Windows XP. So I got this down to working almost perfectly. So with that being said, let's jump into the desktop of that laptop. And in the patch version of uh, Windows XP, from Zone 94, they do include a browser called PAL68. Well, technically it's Firefox modified, so it does work on Windows XP. So that's what I've been using as far as the browser goes. So to begin, I'm gonna show you some of my stuff on the computer. I'm gonna right click, go to properties, and I don't know if you can see this, but this is i5-3203M CPU, 2.6 gigahertz. I'm running at 1.9 right now, but I do have four gigs of RAM. Technically, I have 16 gigs of RAM on this machine, but only four gig can be registered uh, using a 32-bit Windows XP. If I wanted to get more RAM, I would have to switch over to either 64-bit, but there is a hack that you could technically get up to 64 gigabytes. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm, I don't think I am going to. Four gigs of RAM is more than enough. And what I'm going to show you right now is my hardware. I do have everything working other than um, Lenovo Easy Camera. And there's something over here that I got to look at, which is the ACPI compliant embedded driver controller, which I might be able to get a driver for, but I haven't looked into that yet. But otherwise, everything is installed. And you can see over here, I have two G4 650Ms. So it's got two graphic cards, dual graphic cards. It's going to be great playing games on this. And, and I've never seen XP this clean before on a widescreen, big resolution. The last time I've ever installed Windows XP, I think was, I don't know, 2006, 2005 and still on those square LCD monitors. Maybe I think I've used it once before on a widescreen, but not in a 1080 resolution. Um, moving forward, I'm gonna take a look at um, the browsers. And it does bring me over to Zone 94, which is the website I was talking about where you could actually get the patch to update your Windows XP. But more, what I'm more interested in is just going to normal websites. Like I could go to, I could go to Google, um, I could go to YouTube, and in YouTube, I'm actually gonna go to my channel what I found interesting about this is, um, say I'm gonna play my latest video, which is a Mac OS video. Audio works perfect. And you can see it actually loads pretty good. 
I'm going to lower the volume on that, but I'm going to make this bigger and you can see, look, full screen. The only thing I noticed is that it's blotchy on the black, even though it's on 1080 resolution right now, um, the color is not as good as it would be on Windows 10. You could tell there are some blotchiness on the fades and everything. So that's something I didn't even notice until watching it on a Windows XP machine, but it works. It works really good. I could actually play videos and whatnot that I want on this uh, operating system. So as far as browsers and videos go, work great. Now, funniest thing is I have a lot of games installed like StarCraft, Battlefield 2, Hitman, World of Warcraft, Crisis, um, and I actually own the same games that I already own on CD format from GOG. So technically I could just download it from GOG and then install it. But for now I am installing everything through CD. And the first thing I'm gonna check out is Crisis. So you can see it actually runs it very well. Unfortunately, I should have played a little at least to get past the save file, but you can see it's gonna load. And there we have it, Crisis. And it actually looks pretty smooth. Now it does have a weird resolution of uh, 1024 by 768. I don't think I'd get higher than that. Let me go to options and see. Uh, is it system settings, graphics, and, oh no, I could actually get it to 1080. It was on 1080. Thought it was on a different resolution, but let's try out single player. And here we have it. It's going to start the game. I think we're jumping out of a plane or something like that. August 7, 2020. Interesting. So here we are. Look how smooth it runs. It's so amazing. Anywhere I could like show the display of FPS. I don't think there is. I wanted to see if I could display uh, FPS meter. Look at that, the raindrops and everything. It looks so good. And it moves so smooth. Now I could definitely play older games with this setup. And it's running only one GPU right now. I don't think I have a set to run both GPUs at the same time. Nice. It moves so good. But then again, I do have a pretty powerful PC to run this game. And nice. I'm terrible at this game. I'm not planning to actually play this. Alright, that was pretty fun. Next up we have a game that actually requires CD-ROM and because this automatically will expand everything that I need. Now next time I'm going to be testing StarCraft Brood Wars, which Watch this. Instant load. Single player. Let's play expansion. Custom game. Uh, food wars, web maps, and let's do Big Game Hunter. Ooh. It still looks so good. Such a good game. I wonder if Battle.net still works on this. Not the new one, the old Battle.net. I could play this for days. This game was such a good game back in the day. I used to play this all the time. You had to play, plan out the timing and everything. And everything runs so smooth. Again, I'm not going to make you guys sit through this, but this is such a fun game. Got this. Build extractor. Where's my... That's coming soon. Let's grab that. Build another drone. 
start up a spawning pool soon. Okay, Proton turns it here. And then you build a couple more drones, build some Zerglings, and make a Russia base. Everything seems to be working perfectly fine. Next one I'm going to check out, do I need the CD for Battlefield? Now I am going to plan to get the no CD patches for these. Some of them actually have like a Brood Wars. I could technically go to uh, Blizzard and download the latest patch that doesn't require the CD-ROM anymore. Which is something I will probably do be doing for most of these games. This way I don't have to use a CD-ROM because this computer right now doesn't have one. But again, I don't plan to play these online. I just want to finish the storyline or play it uh, when I have time. And having a computer that's compatible to play everything is so much more better. There you go. Just works. Look okay, at 2005 when this came out. Now while we're waiting for this, one of the favorite things I like to do when I bought these games is look at the requirements. Like Battlefield 2, the requirements for this is Windows XP 32-bit and a video card for 128 megabytes of memory. And you need 512 megabytes of RAM and 3 gigs of hard drive space. Like, that's just Battlefield. And now I'm reading something like um, X2 The Threat. If I look up that stuff, it's Windows 98, Windows Me, Windows 2000, and the highest is Windows XP. You need 128 megs of RAM and some graphic card. It just says NVIDIA GeForce Radeon or 3D card of the same grade. Like just to play X2 to threat. And like World of Warcraft and other games, their specs are very similar. It's like you need Windows 2000 or Windows uh, XP and, and like 128 megabytes of video RAM. It's insane. Like we're up to like 10 gigs or 20 gigs on certain video cards. And back in the day, it's just 128 megs of RAM, video RAM. Here we go, look at this. You could choose the one you want. You could be a medic. That's why I used to play a lot, medic. But I could do assault. Let's go here. Man, I love this game. Double tap forward. I'm going the wrong way. It's this way. Hmm. Wow. I remember this game. And look at the graphics for being a 2005, this game. It's amazing. I mean, the newer games that we play now are similar in graphics. I mean, a little bit better, but not too much. But it requires like 8 gigs of video RAM. I'm not planning to really play this game, but it's just showing you it runs without an issue. Anyway, I actually had a lot of fun doing this, but not really. The fun part was more like I got it going, I set it up, and it, it was very fun doing that. Trying to find drivers and running into problems, that was not the fun part. But eventually, when I got a computer that mostly supports everything and got everything working, I had a lot of fun playing around with it, especially getting games I used to play working again. And upon doing a little bit more research, I found out that you could technically run your own World of Warcraft server if you got the old version of World of Warcraft. So I might play around with that idea so I could just have my own little open world and do whatever I want. Anyway, if you guys have certain things you want to see on this particular Windows XP, let me know down in the comments below. Or if you want me to do even older systems like Windows 98 or Windows 95 on something else, let me know. I, I might make this a series. I, I, I actually really enjoy trying to build these computers out again. It was, it was a lot of fun. But if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, heck till it hurts.